I like this guy, Andrew Kelly. I like this guy. He's been commenting. Uh, a recent video I made was called Balding and Bearded, The Way the Good Lord Designed You. And Andrew Kelly had this to say, quote, It's an interesting thought. That is an accentuation of diversity in biology. However, there is something to be said of the psychological torment of hair loss. I myself am a Norwood one and a half, uh, but I have sparse facial hair growth at 21. It is difficult for me to reconcile this notion of a trade-off. Of course, as always, Nick, I enjoy your content and appreciate being a facet in this collective dialogue." End quote. Andrew, you must be an English major. I'm an English major, but just based on your emotional intelligence and your vocabulary, you sound like you're majoring in English like I did. All right, Let, let's just unpack this. I'm sure I've made this video before to some degree, but let's do the October 2017 version of this. I like that word trade-off. Uh, <laughs> how he's saying he's having trouble reconciling this notion of a trade as a, as a trade-off, because in that video I was saying how I I ultimately believe the way that our bodies were designed as men. Some of us were, a, are, were not only grew facial hair and body hair in our teenage years at a much higher rate and earlier rate than, than our peers, but we also are therefore most likely to lose our hair sooner. Uh, you know, there's, there's studies saying that we've got more testosterone and therefore there's more health problems that come with that, but then also it's easier to build muscle. So there's all these little things. And, and ultimately though, we don't choose it. And I think that for me, that simplifies it. <laughs> okay. What, what if, what if before I was even conceived and born back in, well, I was born in 81, but conceived in 1980. <laughs> so just my consciousness in 1980 and God says, Nick, when, when, when I uh, design you, do you want to uh, be one of the guys that gets to uh, have a nice beard? And, and if you work out, you'll have better muscles? Or do you wanna be the guy that just barely has any body hair, but then you'll probably keep much hair? Which one do you wanna be? If I had the choice, I would've probably yeah, chosen the other one. But I mean, it just matters so little to me now. I'm like, either way, for me, the choice has been made. This is how I was born. I'm not gonna fight nature. And I think for me, that's how I reconcile it. Um, I, I think the important thing is to not deny the patterns to not deny that. I mean, it's for me, again, I spent two summers in Thailand teaching English over there. And I saw so many men ages 50, 60 and 70. And they had, they had more hair than I do right now. <laughs> and that was so normal over there. And none of them. And the only thing they had for facial hair was sometimes just a little bit of a mustache and a little bit of a goatee down here, no matter what age they were. That was just so normal. And if this, well, as far as the trade-off goes, let me tell you this story. And it's probably still somewhere on my YouTube channel. I talk about the time I went to a Korean spa because um, I also went to Korea for two weeks teaching English over there in 2004. And when I was over there, I had to go to this overnight. Well, I went to this overnight sauna, which is very customary over there. And, and I went with my students. And imagine me being the only white guy in this room of hundreds of of naked uh, Korean men and boys who were just fascinated. <laughs> this is gonna sound so weird. They were just fascinated by seeing me naked. <laughs> but it's true, it's a true story. And what I mean by that though, what they were most fascinated by, and perhaps the only thing they were fascinated by, <laughs> was how much body hair I had. <laughs> They were very fascinated by my body hair. These guys could barely speak English. They were complete strangers coming up to the sauna. Oh, you, you're very handsome. You're a very handsome man. You, you're macho man. Like, that's how they sounded. That, that was their accent. I'm not being racist, I'm telling you. I taught English over there. I was there to teach them. And in their broken English, that's what I kept hearing. And. So they were telling me how handsome I was, how macho I was, and then more than once, they would touch my arm, or sometimes touch my leg, and I just, I thought, you know what, I wanna be respectful of their culture, because this isn't anything weird to them. They're, in this environment, this is normal for them. And they just kept touching my body hair on my arms, and sometimes my leg, 
and they were just fascinated by it. So it is interesting to think in an, in an alternate universe how a completely, you know, a different part of the world on the other side of the world in a, in a different race, and I believe that the word race is a bit arbitrary, but either way, my point is they have different DNA. And it's different than ours. More predictably, they're going to keep their hair and not have as much body hair. And not just facial hair, but body hair. So, there you go. I'm, I'm a guy who, um, you know, I'm of, I'm of Jewish descent. I'm of Middle Eastern descent. That alone, because that, that makes a total of like 15% of me, all right? That alone is probably enough to, to make it to where I'm going to be the hairy guy who loses his hair sooner and grows the beard, you know? Uh, part of me is Central American, the 22%, which is arguably Asian. So there you go, I have it there. Have you ever looked at my eyes and thought maybe he, he is part Asian? Someone guessed that I was. Actually, two people at my work thought I was part Asian. But I believe that, that the Central American uh, gene traces back to Asia when they came through, uh, you know, China, Mongolia, uh, but Russia, Alaska, and then came to America, Central America, you know. So, but anyway, that's the only part of me that really doesn't. And even my mom, she uploaded her DNA to this website and it showed like, it. I guess it showed and predict health issues that she may or may not have. And it, I'm not, I, I'll get her to do a video about this later, next time I see her. But uh, but it, it showed that even she has the, the male, she contains the male uh, res, uh Bonding gene, what I'm trying to say. So, even though all of her brothers are age 60 and have Norwood ones, she actually contains that gene herself. So even though her brothers didn't go bald, and again they're in their they're 60, but uh, but yeah, she she uh, she didn't. So uh, I mean, she has the gene. So even if I hadn't got it from my dad, I would have probably gotten it from her. And you know what? That is fine by me. My identity is not in my hair loss. My identity is in so many other things and I celebrate those things. But my hair, not part of my identity. It's, it's just not. And especially, give me 10 years and you'll see me with, with no hair. And Okay, especially it won't be then. What is this video even about? I, how does this even start? I, have to, I really don't know what this video is about. I've been, he was talking about, oh, the trade-off, okay. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to title this video, I really don't. 